Okay, that's great for two variables. Let's take a third variable. Let's see what 3D looks like. Well, we talked about sharks and tuna, but we didn't say anything about how the tuna survive. Well, let's say that the tuna survive by eating plankton. And so now we have a three variable system. It is represented by a three tuple. And so at a particular point in time, it's S0, T0, P0, a certain number of sharks, a certain number of tuna, and a certain number of plankton. And as I said, this is a three tuple, but we might as well start using a fancy word. And the fancy word for three tuple is a three vector. That's right, a vector, and you may have associations from high school, but here a vector is an n tuple of state variables. This is a three vector. The old shark tuna two tuple is called a two vector. And if we have n variables, then we have an n vector. For example, if the variables are x1 through xn, that gives us an n vector. So we learned this nice terminology here of vector, and the vector terminology is telling us that we represent the state of the system by an n vector, where n is the number of variables, a one vector, a two vector, a three vector, whatever. Now, naturally, when we go over to the geometric picture, you can pretty much anticipate what it is. We have a shark axis, and we have a tuna axis, and now we have a plankton axis. And a point in shark, tuna, plankton space, S0, T0, P0, is a certain number of sharks and a certain number of tuna. And you have to imagine now this point is out off the surface of the tablet here. Uh, it's going to have a projection onto P, and that's P0. And so a point in the three, in the three space STP represents the number of sharks and the number of tuna and the number of plankton at a point in time. So we have this point, S0, T0, P0, this three tuple or three vector that represents the number of sharks, the number of tuna, and the number of plankton at this point in time. Now, of course, when I say S0, T0, P0, that's just, that zero is just an index number. I don't mean that the number of sharks is zero. I mean that's the first instance and we start numbering with zero like mathematicians, uh, that's the first instance of our state point. It, S0 could be 500, and T0 could be 38, and P0 could be 2,400. So this is the n-tuple that represents, in this case, three-tuple, that represents the state of the system at a time, and this is, of course, our three-vector. Now, I want to say something about vectors because this is a word that you've heard before and we're using it here in a slightly more advanced fashion. You've certainly heard the statement that a vector, and let's just put it in an abstract xy space, that a vector has magnitude and direction. Where, where this is the magnitude and this is the direction. Now, that terminology is something that we are going to use, but we're going to use both terminologies. What I'm talking about here is the state point S0, T0, P0, which you can think of as the tip of the vector. So 
the terminology vectors as arrows has exactly the same information as vectors as state points. Because given the state point, it's easy to draw the arrow. It's trivial to draw the arrow from the origin to the state point. That has the same information. And given the arrow, you just take the tip of it and call that the state point. So those are two equivalent terminologies, arrows and state points. And we are going to use them both heavily. And as a matter of fact, we're going to go back and forth between them a lot. So let's get used to that. Uh, a three-tuple is a point in three space, and that point in three space can also be understood as the arrow pointing to that point in three space from the origin. So we've seen single variable lives in a one-dimensional state space, which is a line, a pair of variables, a two-vector, lives in a two-dimensional space, a three-vector lives in a three-dimensional space. Do we have to stop there? What about four variables? When you study the neuron, you will learn that the neuron is characterized by a voltage, by a sodium concentration, by a potassium concentration, and by a calcium concentration. So the neuron is represented, the state of the neuron at a time, is represented by a four-tuple or a four-vector. Now, how do we draw this? Before, I used the convention of writing, drawing three variables on a two-dimensional two plane, and we all know how to do that. But what do we do now? How do we draw four space? How do we draw five space? How do we draw 156 space? The answer is we can't. We don't because we can't. There is no way of representing four variables simultaneously on a two-dimensional graph which is all we have. But here is my point, and this is a really important point. Our inability to draw for space is the only problem with it, is that human beings cannot draw them and cannot visualize them. There is nothing wrong with the concept of for space. And we are going to operate with four tuples and 10 tuples and 25 tuples, just like we operate with one tuples, two tuples, and three tuples. We just can't easily draw the result, but that's just a limitation on drawing. It is not going to hold us back mathematically at all because we are now going to set out a set of rules for operating with vectors. And those rules are going to be good everywhere, one space, two space, 10 space, whatever. So let's now move on to rules for operating with vectors.